Welcome to the Digital Production Buzz at the 2015 NAB Show. Hi, this is Larry Jordan, and this interview was recorded live on the trade show floor. For more information, visit digitalproductionbuzz.com. It all starts with the glass in front of your camera. If you don't have a good lens, I don't care how good your camera is, you don't have a good picture. And when you want good lenses, you're thinking Cook. And Les Zellin is the chairman and owner of Cook Optics, the manufacturer of Cook Lenses. Les, it's always fun to chat with you at the show. Thanks for it's coming back. It's great to come by. Tell us about what Cook is for people that haven't heard of the company you before. Know, uh, Cook is a legendary within the film industry, and obviously now as film and, and digital and video seem to all come together, we're making headways into the, that end of the industry. Uh, Cook's been around since the 1880s. Uh, we've been... Really? 1880s? 1886, the, the parent... You don't look that old. I know. I'm pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Although my voice is getting old today. Um, and in the motion picture industry, at almost every critical junction, Cook has been the company that solved the problem. Uh, up until sound films came out, we, we made our first motion picture, specifically for the motion picture lens, in about 1905. Uh, when sound came out, we developed the Speed Pancros, which were the first real professional fast lenses that made sound movies possible. Because you, the lenses were too slow before that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they were light with arc lights and really noisy or sunlight. Or 10-second exposures for yes. a single. That was a little long for film. Yes. <laughs> so, um, and then when Technicolor came out with the three-strip color process uh, in the 30s, uh, Nobody could figure out how to have that long back focus they needed because the Technicolor three-strip camera was essentially the forerunner of the three-chip video camera. Mm -hmm. And um, nobody could figure out how to do that. And they came to Cook. Cook invented a whole new genre of lens design called inverse telephoto, which is a, a standard form today for everybody. But it was invented by Cooks, and that solved that problem. And then later, we developed really the first real professional zooms for the motion picture industry. And, th and then when I took over the company, we came out with the first modern prime lenses uh, in, the, in the 90s. And, the, you know, it's just been when did you strength to strength. When did you take over? I took over the company in 1998. That's a long time ago. It <laughs> Seems like yesterday, but it, yeah, it's a long time ago. We've, and, you know, we've had great success with uh, all of our products. We've got a lot of people that are watching that are instantly Googling Cook lenses and saying, good golly, these things are like $800 million a piece. Yeah. Well, 900 million. But yeah. the point is that I discovered the last time you and I talked is that you don't necessarily need to buy a Cook lens to take advantage of a Cook lens. You can rent one. Exactly. And that was a little piece of insight that had eluded me prior to oh. this because it gave me the ability to take advantage of the look of a cook without having necessarily to invest right. when I don't have that kind of money sure. in my budget. Yeah. That is, that, you know, it's obvious in retrospect, but it's so cool yeah. to discover for the first time. Yeah, well, you know, our main, in, within the industry, be it film and now video and TV and everything else, our main customer really is, are the rental houses. They probably buy... They probably buy about seventy percent of what we make, really? and the other, and now that you know with digital, as the cameras become less and less expensive, uh, people are understanding what you said in the intro. You know, it really comes down to the glass in front of it. The camera is you know as great as Sony and all these guys do, and with their cameras, it's really just a computer in a box on your shoulder, and everybody knows that it's going to be, you know, obs it's obsolete by the time you put it on your shoulder. But the people are still making movies and TV shows with glass we made 80, 90 years ago. So it's, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing that, um, you know, this is, the glass just holds its value and holds its usefulness. Now, analyze the lens. I know you've got new stuff. I'm going to talk about it in a second. But analyze the lens. If I were to slice it open, is it just a single piece of glass inside? Oh, no, no. Uh, lenses uh, are multiple elements in multiple groups. Uh, you know, a big zoom may have 20, 30 pieces of glass in it. 20 to 30? Yes. A, uh, you know, a prime lens, uh, maybe 10 to 20 depending on the focal length. One of my favorite interviews, and, and you guys need to look this up, was about three years ago from NAB, was when you were describing how you pick 
the clay that goes, or whatever it is, that goes into the lens, the actual thing you dig from the earth. And that description just sticks with me in terms of how you have to pick the right components to melt down, to form the yeah. glass in the first. I'd do it again, but we don't have enough time. It's just one of my most favorite discussions and one of the things that sticks oh, in yeah. my mind about chatting with you. Yeah, you know, one, one of the things I do do, and I know we're not going to do it here, but I do, I go all, I've, I've been invited all over the world to give a lecture on, on lens making. Uh, it's about an hour and a half, so it, we sure. won't do it here, but it's, it's quite fascinating. No, but I'd love to hear it. Yeah. What have you got that's new for us this year? You know, last year we've been talking, we've, last two years we've been talking about anamorphics. We announced them two years ago, we started delivering them last year, and we were introducing anamorphic prime lenses. And, excuse me, we were, and, and we're doing front anamorphic lenses, and that's, that's pretty important to, there's a distinction between front and rear anamorphic. The distinction is, if you want it to look anamorphic, and you want the anamorphic artifacts and what I call anamorphic funkiness, the character of anamorphic, you have to do the squeezing in front of the iris. If you do it behind the iris, it looks spherical. So we introduced these front anamorphic prime lenses, uh, announced them two years ago, started delivering last year. and. What the industry was missing was a front anamorphic zoom. So none of my competitors that specializes in zooms were doing, they were all doing rear anamorphic. So they, while they had the coverage, they didn't have the character of anamorphic. So this year we've announced a, a front anamorphic zoom, which we'll be delivering later this year. That is so cool. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, that is just fascinating to me is we talk about the technology in microchips and we talk about the technology in the computer, but the technology in a lens is just as complex and just as challenging. And how do you keep up? It's, you know, it's, it changes probably slower in this. We're dealing with, you know, we're dealing really with glass and we're not, we're not in electronics where somebody comes up with a new chip tomorrow. Uh, but we are dealing with different glasses and, and new metal components and new ways of manufacturing, you know, 3D printing and so forth. Um, it, it's a challenge, and you know our product is really handmade. Which gets me to something we'll talk about the next time. Les, where can people go to visit, learn about your gear? Sure, they can go to cookoptics.com. That's C-O-O-K-E-O-P-T-C-O-P-T-I-C-S. Cook Optics, <laughs> all one word. Les Allen, CEO. Les, thank you very thank much. Thank you.